of Jalen Rose, longtime NBA player, star from the old legendary Michigan Fab Five team, uh, is in for Golick this morning. And if you were listening a few minutes ago, you heard Peter Gammons mention Jimmy Walker. Now, p- many people in our audience, Jalen, probably have no idea who Jimmy Walker was. Uh, Jimmy Walker, and we're not talking about the guy who was J.J. on Good Times. Yeah, not at all. Not J.J. from Good Times. Not Brother J. He's not the guy who said dynamite. <laughs> Jimmy Walker was an all-time great college basketball star who was the number one pick in the NBA draft once upon a time. Uh, ironically, I've had a great players, Hall of Fame players like Earl the Pearl Monroe and Walt Clyde Frazier. He went ahead of those guys. He was the number one pick in the draft. He was your father. And you never met him in person? Never met him in person, one time. Uh, Actually, he wrote me a letter while I was in college around the time the Mitch album got in contact with him to write the Fab Five book. And I wasn't emotionally ready to actually read that letter. So I kept that letter for for about five to six years. Austin, Austin Crozier went to Providence. He had a few trophies. They buried my father's name. They had the same athletic director. Austin Crozier bridged the gap between me and the athletic director, got me the phone number. I reached out and called them one day. I was sitting up in Dale Davis's house. Oh, you called your father? Absolutely. I got the number from Austin Crozier. I was over Dale Davis' house one night. We were watching NBA on, on TV. I saw an old school highlight. I called him right then and actually tracked him down. Didn't get him that day. We got him a couple of days later, had a couple of phone conversations. Unfortunately, he passed away last year, so I never got a chance to meet him. But uh, rest in peace. You know, it's interesting because I thought I had read that you had met up with him. I, 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 and we discussed this off the air a right. few minutes ago, so when I found it out. You had intended to, right? You, yes, you, I did. You did mean to go and see him. Yes, he had cancer. So I definitely wanted to at least show my respect to him because a lot of times – you grow up in a single parent home, you grow up without your parents, you become so bitter and so hard when you're young. And then you get older, you get mature, and you realize my life is awesome. I'm not living underneath a freeway. I'm playing in the NBA. And the last time I checked, that's a direct seed, a direct deposit from him. So because of that, I matured and I felt like I wanted to reach out to him and meet him. But more importantly, I'm just happy I got a chance to tell him thank you and let him know I had no hard feelings. What did he say to you? He told me he was proud of me. He told me he appreciated what I was doing, the young man I've become, the player I'd become. And uh, that meant a lot to me because uh, it let me know that he was watching. I knew he was out there somewhere, but it was good to let me know he was watching. Jalen Rose in our studio with us. Now, interestingly, Dave Bing who is an NBA Hall of Famer and is now the mayor of Detroit as of actually sworn in on Monday, um, was a good friend of his, yes. of your father's. Yes. And you went to work at one time for Dave Bing. Absolutely. They were teammates, all-star teammates with the Detroit Pistons. Dave is obviously like a godfather to me because he played with my dad. He knows my mom. I was in high school. Dave Bing was a friend of the family. I was working at being still, and I was literally working. I'm not joking. I worked on the press. I have a high-low license. I was at the lunch truck with the rest of the workers. It was a tremendous experience. Dave Bing has done a lot for me, and congratulations to Dave on being elected mayor of Detroit. Now, clearly, at some point, I mean, you were a well-known basketball player from the time you were pretty young. You were playing in whatever the All-Star Games, the AAU of the day was. Um, and, and certainly by the time you got to college, I mean, you were part of a legendary team. So your father had to know at that point who you were and what you were doing. And you at some point in your life, I don't know how old you were when you found out who your father was, but it had to have been a conscious decision on your part not to meet him, right? You certainly could have if you wanted to. I really found out who he was as a basketball player from the legendary Detroit legend, Sam Washington. You've heard about St. Cecilia basketball in Detroit where we play our summer leagues. I went to school there for sixth and seventh grade. And one day I'm tricking off in the gym and being silly and, Sam brought me over, said, I want to talk to you. He used to call me Rose. Took me in the basement. Oh, dusty projector. Okay. I, was, I ain't going to show my age. Yeah. But it was a projector. Put in the tape. Said, this is what you have in you. Showed me a couple of plays of my father doing a spin dribble, going to work out there on the court. He say, 
You stop being silly, stop messing around, that could be you one day. And that made a difference to you. Absolutely. I started taking the game more serious. And I got a basketball card, and I used to keep it in my pocket. I never let too many people knew I had it, except when I went to the basketball court or the, at the park or anywhere. When the older players wouldn't let me run, that was like my driver's license, my ID card. I show it off, and hopefully the older fellas will let me run. And so the message in this, if there is one, because there are certainly, a, this is by no means the first person you are, by no means the only person to have grown up, you know, in a single parent home and all of that and, and had a lot of resentment or anger in you at one point in your life. Now, not everyone's father was, a, you know, a basketball star. But the message is at some point in your life, you have to let that go, right? Because at some point, you're really only hurting yourself. You're not hurting the person that you're angry at. Faith means things happen for a reason. And the older you get or the more immersed in faith that you are, the sooner you get that. For me, I got it a little bit older. When I was young, I used it as part of my motivation in a negative light. His number was 24. So guess what number I wore in high school? 42. 42. Mm. I was going to do everything to tell myself when I'm in the gym working that one day he's going to know my name. The media doesn't have to know my name. The world can never know who Jalen Rose is. I just want to make sure that he knows my name. And as you get older, you realize I have a tremendous mom, a great family support, and God makes things happen for a reason. Have no hard feelings at all. So in the end, is it a happy story? It's a very happy story. I'm sitting up here with you right now with makeup on my face, <laughs> with shell toes at, a D, at, at ESPN. I just got off work at 2.30. Our meeting was at 5.30, and I'm not tired. I stopped at the gas station. I was so excited about this. I was trying to figure what I was going to do to make sure I stayed up. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to pick up a five-hour energy drink, sure. you know, give a shot to my boy Braylon Networks. You know, yeah. I've seen him on the commercials. So I walk in the gas station. You got a five-hour energy drink? He's like, no. Well, basically, we got the bootlegs. So he has the seven-hour. <laughs> he has the eight-hour. He even has the 14-hour. 14 14 so I just bought the seven-hour. I figured that would be long enough. All right, so what? After the game, we'll go play basketball for two hours before you fall asleep. It's great stuff. Jalen Rose in for Golick. Mike and Mike in the morning. ESPN Radio.